Hey everybody, welcome back to my layout. This will be a layout update for April 2022. Let's take a look at what's new in the layout. The first thing we'll take a look at is these two Jordan spreaders that I finished. I got the decals in from Highwall Graphics. I used their uh, set F322 Canadian Pacific Snowplows and finished up the cab windows on these guys. So the cab side windows for the so it would be the engineer and the conductor side. What I did was I just masked and airbrushed uh, silver color onto the same plastic that I used for the front windows here. I'll throw in a few pictures here of how I did that just really carefully and using that Tamiya yellow masking. And that's funny, I just realized that I numbered them both 887. One of them is supposed to be 889, I'll have to fix that. That's this one here, I think. 889, that's based on prototypes that the 889, I think, is at a Revelstoke. So I had some good pictures of that for weathering reference. You can see the front windows a little bit better. A little more painting I need to do on that air brake hose there. This is the deco set that I used really nice decals from highball all kinds of options you can't really oh yeah you can see there tons of options I got the script the block letters the CP rail and quite a few numbers more than enough to do two and since I was ordering stuff from highball I got a set of these CPR family maintenance away vehicles. Another really cool decal set should be good for some maintenance away stuff or doing custom maintenance away vehicles. Really, really cool. So, with them both being all finished, I went to make the inaugural run and I made an unfortunate discovery on my 40 mile creek bridge. And I made a really rookie mistake, so I'm going to show you guys that. So just west of the station, this is the 40 Mile Creek Girder Bridge. I built this almost two years ago now, I think. But I made a crucial mistake on this guy, and building those spreaders unearthed it. And I've always known that this bridge was tight, but I did not... When I built it, I built it to prototype measurements that I had and drawings. So this thing is, like, hyper-accurate. But... There's one crucial difference about prototype modeling and NMRA measurements, and there's a reason why the NMRA standards are a little bit wider than you'll find on the actual prototype. So my bridge is about 3 millimeters too narrow. And even though that's prototypical, that's not recommended in modeling. Because you can have equipment that ends up being slightly wider than the prototype i.e. my new spreaders. So they don't actually run through this bridge. They try to come through and they just get hung up because like I say I'm a little bit three millimeters about too narrow. So what I'll have to do is I can actually take these girder sides off because they're it's basically a piece of wood with these decorative sides glued to it. So I will be able to do that. I'll take the girder sides off make it a little bit wider. These are just 50-50 um, white glue and water set in here so I should be able to just wet this all down these will come out. But that's a rookie move and I do have to build at least two more of this style. Exact same style of bridge just differs in length. There's actually a double one at Lake Louise. So when I build my next ones I'm going to use the NMRA um, guide for setting these up. So moving on from my narrow 40 mile creek bridge we'll take a look at what's new a little further west down the line and I've gone ahead and started airbrushing the track on the next section of layout that goes around the corner here. So let's have a look at that. Alright, so when we leave the 32 foot vamp section here, the peninsula starts going around and makes a full 180 here. So this is where I had left off with my painting when I did this section. I just quit here and didn't keep going. And so as I start moving on to the next section of layout that I'm going to be working on, which is this Marantz Curve section and into Lake Louise, one of the first things you have to do is paint the track. So I've got my airbrush out and my grimy rail color 
and I went to town and I paint both sides. I make multiple passes with my airbrush, paint one side and then I come back on the other. You can actually see I had to uh, mask off my photo cells for the Logic Rail Technologies crossing circuits. You don't want to get those painted so those are masked off right now. And I haven't gone and uh, scraped the head of the rail yet, you can see there. So you can see there's the photo cells and then all moving all the way around. So I got about, I went all the way down this wall and I came back up to the to the control point at Lake Louise here. That's all been airbrushed now, both sides. My little uh, Pache air compressor is actually, well, I found out to be undersized for this type of thing because it's just like a ton of spraying. Um, takes a lot of paint to cover up that much track and both sides of it. Actually overheated it about halfway down. Didn't want to compress any more air. I had to wait till the, probably the thermal overloads went in it. So, I would think. so following the track down, you can see another big milestone here. So I got the first photo backdrop is up and secured in place and waiting for my second piece of this wall. So I start with green painter's tape. You can see there. I use loops of that to hang it and get the wife to come down here and we spend some time kind of straightening it and getting it as flat as we can and then when you're happy you stick it to the 3M tape on the bottom and that kind of stretches it you like push down like like this stretch it and it looks pretty darn good I'm like I'm really happy with the way this one turned out these really nice mountain panorama there and these are all photos that I took um, in and around Lake Louise and Banff and then the tree lines are all my photos as well Got the Trans-Canada Highway there in the background, that's going to look really cool. And then this, of course, there's this Bow River section that's going to blend into the water on the backdrop and hopefully create a feeling that you're standing there trackside. This is the Fairview Road Crossing, so this is at the east end of Lake Louise near the campgrounds. And I really like how this turned out, so this is one of my photos that I took looking down. And you can really see how it's already starting to have that effect of looking like it goes off into the distance and I haven't even put any road surface down, it's just a piece of wood so I really like how this worked out on the first revision of the print I missed and the road crossing was over about one inch too far so I've corrected that on this print and it looks styled in, really happy with that when you come down to track level and you use the telephoto it looks awesome and it's gonna look even better once I get the road crossing ties in there and the cross bucks and everything it's gonna look really really good this is my rail grime color this is what I use to paint the tracks essentially it's uh, four gray to one brown that's the color I like it seems to look right it gives that rail that grimy initial color and then I'll come back and I'll paint the ties as I go and give it variation we pan here. It's looking down the other way. So next thing I'll be doing, I'm actually just waiting for the parts for the big Bertha printer. Get some new bushings for the carriage and I should be good to go and start printing this last piece. I got the artwork done for it. It's ready. It just needs to be printed. So that'll catch us up to today over on this side. I do have one project that I'm working on on the bench. We'll go over there and take a look at that and a tree update. So going back to the Fairview Road crossing, I got excited about getting that crossing in place looking at the backdrop and how awesome it was starting to look. So that inspired me to get going on building the grade crossing boards for that scene. So I was thinking about how I was going to do this and I had some these are Osborne model kits laser wood cuttings and the cool thing about these was if you have been watching since my old figure 8 layout this was the same pieces I saved them when I demolished that layout I saved all the detail stuff so these are the road crossings that were on that old layout I cleaned them up sanded all the glue off the bottom and then I've redone it to work for Fairview Road there at Lake Louise. So this is just a single track crossing. On my old layout it was a double, but the way that they have that crossing set up at Fairview Road, there's actually this really wide section and it's almost like a double long grade crossing for whatever reason. I don't know if it's for bigger equipment or what. But one cool thing I did 
was I wanted to spend a lot of time getting the details right on this crossing and really weather it and kind of following the prototype pictures I have of it but I didn't want to work on it in place on the layout because it's way over on the other side none of my stuff's near there so what I did was I took a pencil shading I took this piece of paper and put it right on the actual grade crossing and that gave me the outlines of the road board and also the track and then I was able to have an exact copy of what I was working on and then I just built everything here on my workbench so when I know when I take it over there it's gonna fit perfectly and everything's gonna look right so that's a pretty cool way to do it really helps you kind of visualize the scene having a pencil shading of that so the crossing boards are all weathered up and painted and then I did I took a set of these NJ cross bucks and I kinda went to town trying to make them look as much as I could like the ones on the prototype so they've been re repainted the uh, cross bucks are just paper art that I printed off on just letterhead and then the uh, reflectors there those are actual reflectors and these are from smokebox graphics these things are really cool like they actually reflect light and they had a whole bunch of different ones so I got a bunch of stuff I wanted to try but they've got like FRA striping locomotive reflectors white ones and like man the presentation on these guys stuff is just beautiful you almost don't want to use it it's so nice you got yellow for CN so that's actually what I used on my cross bucks was the, uh, the white NS ones and the yellow CN ones and they've got all different sizes and they're just easy to cut out and use super simple and they actually reflect light which is really cool I got a st some of the other stuff too since I was making the order but they got tons of the FRA striping and these ones are just water slide decals that don't reflect so pretty much anything you could dream up these guys have it. They got your striping needs covered. I'm really excited to use these for other projects. There's a ton of things you can do. So the cross bucks have them on the front and back. And then this one I even went and did the mileage marker. Just like the real thing. So that's mileboard 114.8. Which is just east of Lake Louise. So this stuff's all ready to go and get secured in place on the layout. It's just waiting for me to clean up the painted track and paint ties. Lastly, it's still springtime here in Alberta. It was minus 10 Celsius out yesterday in a blizzard. So tree making is still ongoing. Here's another half a dozen waiting for paint and static grass and everything. Been just working away. I think I got another 40 or so done this month. Here's the next batch coming along. So I've been working on some backdrop ones. So those ones there that are a little more skimpier there in the background. What I do, I've talked about it before, but I basically cut them in half so they only have half the tree. And those ones can go right up against the backdrop. So there's no gap. And then I built a couple rows of those. I made a really some really tall ones. And then I've just been working on some standard ones. Total layout tree count right now as of today, we're up to 685. Alright, so with that, that'll catch us up to today with everything that's new on the layout over the past month. As always, thanks a lot for watching, and we'll see you guys next time.